Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to go into Revelation, the 13th chapter, um, in its entirety. And hopefully we can get to the end of it um, as we're living in a time, you know, where there's um, many, uh, you know, heresies, you know, popping up surrounding, you know, what the beast is, what the dragon is, you know, what his image is, what's the mark. And um, from what I'm listening to, men really don't have understanding, you know, of Revelation, the 13th chapter and what it is in its entirety. So we're going to go into Revelation, the 13th chapter and give you brothers and sisters, hopefully through the Holy Spirit, understanding of this chapter as it is a vision. OK, given to our forefather. All right. John, the apostle. OK, the uh, or John, the revelator. Which was the favorite disciple of Yahweh Shai. All right. And when you um, read his writings. Um, the uh, epistle of John. All right. In the beginning was the word. He presents Yahweh Shai from a very, very, um, you know, high level. He, he presents him from his highest order. OK. As the word of the most high God. OK. So um, at this time he received this vision. He was the final of the 12 disciples who were alive. All of them were uh, put to death, you know, for their testimony. Um, and he's a slave subject uh, to a salt mine called the Isle of Patmos. OK, so. He received this vision. All right. Via an angel directly from Yahweh Shai. All right. To um, write these particular things down. So that in the latter days, you know, we can know and understand what's going on and be able to, through the Holy Spirit, unlock. All right. With these uh, these parables and these dark sayings and, and, and these prophecies are really saying now. John, the revelator, received this vision. OK. And what he's seeing, as you see, the title here in the blue letter is a beast from the sea. OK. The beast from the sea. Now, you must understand the book of Daniel, the seventh chapter, to understand, all right, what John the Revelator is seeing here. Because when you go to Daniel, the seventh chapter, okay, he prophesies of four great beasts coming up out of the sea, which is the people, as we'll show you, all right, diverse one from another, all right. And these four great beasts, when you deal with beasts, okay, is speaking of Humans, men on the earth, all right, the sons of men, along with the sons of the wicked, which don't have order. They're very beast-like, okay? They don't rule with the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that was given unto the sons of God. Therefore, their empires are temporal, okay? These, these beasts, all right, which, you know, pretty much to break them down, you have the Assyrians, the Babylonians, you have the uh, Persians and the Medes. All right. And then you have the Greeks. OK. All right. The Greeks are the beginning of Esau's power structure on the earth. And then you have the Romans, which is uh, what established them with great authority in the earth. So what John, the revelator, is seeing is, you know, the 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 fourth beast, which it was the Greco-Roman Empire. OK. That's why you see here in, in America remnants of. Greek and Roman culture, all right? But Rome is where they got their power seat, all right? That very system ruling in end time prophecy, okay, as it will be rebirthed into the earth is what John the Revelator is seeing here in this whole chapter, breaking down what they would do, all right? Even leading up to now where they're getting ready to issue forth, all right, the Haragma, all right? And we'll get to that. So, We'll start here in Revelation, the 13 chapter, it says, and I stood up on the sand of the sea and saw a beast. Again, remember these beasts, um, which I just did a lesson, you know, on the beast, you know, um, showing you what it means. It's really speaking of men, but it's men without order. 
okay, without, you know, their, their ruling and establishing systems that are contrary, all right, to the system, all right, of righteousness that was blessed upon the sons of God, all right, the righteous way, the law, statutes, and commandments. So he saw a beast rise up out of the sea now to understand what the sea is. When you go to um, Revelation 17 and 15, and he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Okay? So the waters, which human beings are made up of 75% plus, maybe even more of water, Okay, the, the waters represent people. Okay, and when you go into a precept, let's get uh, Psalm 65 and 7, speaking of the Most High. Okay, which still it the noise of the seas, the noise of their waves, and the tumult of the people. This is what he's going to do when he shuts up, you heathen, when he puts down all of your authority and, and, and takes away your power. He's going to still the noise of the seas. All right, but when you go into prophecy... Daniel, all right, saw, all right, these these four great beasts rise up out of the sea, all right, and then he saw a revival of that fourth beast, all right, rule and reign in the earth. So for a time, the Heavenly Father would allow, okay, uh, let's get Daniel, uh, a great example of that is Daniel, the uh, fourth chapter in the 17th verse, we always go to this, okay, and I believe it's one in Wisdom of Solomon, someone could post it. On how the Heavenly Father sets up these kingdoms on earth. Daniel 4 and 17. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones. To the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men. Okay. And giveth it to whomsoever he will and set it up over it the basis of men. So the Heavenly Father gives these particular rulers their power. All right. And within their rulerships, uh, let's get Psalms or Proverbs 21. Within these rulerships, they all do doing the bidding of the Lord anyway. Proverbs 21 and one, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. And as the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. So the heavenly father controls these heathen. You see, he controls these heathen. All right. So we'll put that back to uh, Daniel 7 and we'll go back to Revelation 13. So the beast from the sea. And I stood up on the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. OK, Esau Edom is this particular beast. Now to look up this word beast real quick in the Greek is good as well. It's Therion. Okay, Therion, an animal, wild animal, wild beast. All right, now you remember in the garden, the serpent was subtile than, than, than any of the beasts of the field. These are nations of people. All right, these are men ruling, right? But they, they don't have the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, all right, through the comforter or Chakwadash. They ain't dealing with them. All right, this particular beast and nation uh, uh, here, the Edomites deals directly with Satan. It says metaphorically a brutal, and we know he's brutal, bestial, we know he's bestial, savage, all right, ferocious. So speaking of a man with these qualities, all right, and that's how Esau Edom has ruled the earth. Now going back, give me one second here. Going back to Revelation uh, 13, Salakia. All right. It says, um, and I stood up on the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. And you got to understand the Edomites, when you look at all of those beasts in Daniel, starting with the Assyrian, Babylonian, you know, the uh, the Persians, the Medes, the Edomites were always there helping the heathen. And they always had an eye. All right. On Jacob. All right. At the time of the Babylonians, they helped them to you know, destroy the temple. OK, we know when the, the Persians were in power, you know, you had Haman. OK, so these Edomites have always been in cahoots with these particular uh, beast. 
you see, to um, put themselves in position to be at the top. And ultimately what they want to do is get the birthright back. That's pretty much been their goal. That's why they always wanted control of, you know, uh, Jerusalem, you know, which, you know, going we, we're going to get into Herod. You see, but anyway, having seven heads and ten horns, the seven heads are as follows. All right, the uh, Greeks, the Romans, Germania Superior, all right, Germania Minor, or Germania Major and Germania Minor, all right, the Spanish, okay, the uh, French, and the British, all right, and out of British came America. That's why it says in Revelation 17, the eighth came of the seven, but it's of the seventh. It's the same. It's the revival of Rome, pretty much. But it came out of Britain, which that was Rome as well being revived. But we'll get into all of that. And it had ten horns. All right. Now, back then, in the ancient Roman Empire, you had what are, what are known as vassal states. Okay. These vassal states pretty much gave their power to Rome. You see, they had their, you know, governments and their things going on, but they gave their power to the Roman Empire. All right. Back then, it was the Vandals, the Ostrogoths, the Alemanni, the Franks, the Visigoths, the Burgundians, the Lombardies, Anglo-Saxons, Suevi, and the Hureli. Okay. Now, today, all right, you have what is known as the European Union. Okay. Belgium, France, Germany, Greece, Italy, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Portugal, Sp uh, Spain, um, UK, then you got like Australia, Denmark, Finland, Ireland, you know, Swedes, you know, basically these are the vassals, all right, of the Roman Empire that give their power to the beast to make it what? Uh, a beast system, all right? So politically, trade, militarily, they all come in, they all come together, but we're living in a time where it's all being broken up, okay? So he's he's basically seeing this uh this 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 system as a whole here, all right? This beast has seven heads and ten horns, okay? Which they were given power, as we'll show you in you know big time with under you know ancient Rome, and it was reborn into the earth, all right? Um, even now, when you look at the uh, what's happening in, in in Davos, Switzerland. OK. When you look at, you know, Germania Superior or Upper Germania, it says it was an Im imperial province of the Roman Empire. It comprised of an area of today's western Switzerland. See, so all of these 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 regions, <laughs> you know, that were, uh, you know, uh, once in power, they're all they're, it's all the same thing. They're all back in power. Why do you think they're ruling uh, or, or meeting the rulers are meeting at Davos, Switzerland? All right. That's pretty much the energy of ancient Rome. All right. This beast. All right. That has consumed the whole entire planet Earth. OK. <clears throat> so it says having seven heads and ten horns and upon his horns, ten crowns. And upon the, his heads, the names of blasphemy. So when you look at this word blasphemy, when you look up this word blasphemy, okay, this is ultimately what Esau, Edom was put on the earth to do. Okay, we know in the book of Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, it says he comes to what? do the bidding of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. That word lying is pseudos. So his very coming, his energy is complete blasphemy against Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, slander, detraction, speech injurious to another's good name. It tells you later when we read, he blasphemed the name, the tabernacle, them that dwell in heaven. Impious and reproachful speech injurious to divine majesty and who's the divine majesty Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai all right so in these systems all right within this beast system will be forwarded what blasphemies hard speech against the most high 
okay, Xing out his son, boasting in their technology. We see it today, all right? But even going back to uh, uh, the, uh, the Greeks, you know, through them came the Hellenization, all right, which was, you know, basically, you know, you can't worship Yahweh, all right, by Hashem Yahweh You can't get into the scrolls. You can't keep the, the Sabbath. You can't circumcise your child, all right, blasphemies. All right, so this is saying, basically, when you go back to uh, verse 13, okay, <laughs> it says, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. So that's how he would rule. All right, they would gain power through what? Deception. As a matter of fact, <clears throat> Revelation, the 20th chapter, okay, as this, this beast ascends out of the uh, bottomless pit, which is, you know, the history going into the uh, Renaissance period, okay? Re Revelation uh, 20 and 7, and when a thousand years are expired, okay, the Byzantine Empire, okay, which, what was that? That was a result of the Western Roman Empire falling, all right? So when a thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. He who comes to what? Do the bidding of Satan. Okay. Uh, Satan means adversary. The biblical Edomite is the adversary. All right. Of Jacob. All right. Satan is the adversary of Yahweh Shai. The two are opposed to another. So Satan will be loosed out of his prison. All right. A renaissance period. And what would he do? Go out and deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. That's what he's done. Okay? That's what he's done. <laughs> he's went out to deceive the nations, and that's going to lead to World War III. He's deceived and lied about everything, and that's what's given him his power. Okay? Now, in verse 2, all right, so he gives you an overall aspect of this beast and how it, it, it will forward nothing but blasphemy against the most high. Okay. They would commit sacrilege. They would destroy holy things. They would basically bring a, a, a culture of, all right, do as thou wilt and Satanism in the earth. All right. Which pretty much is predicated upon the fact that you don't have to be bound to order. All right. To what a God says to standards. OK. Verse two in the beast, which I saw was like unto a leopard. All right. Now, when you go to Daniel, the seventh chapter. OK, the, the leopard is tied to who? OK. The Greeks, the Greeks. OK. Daniel seven and six. And after this, I beheld and lo, a leopard which had upon the back of it. Four wings of a fowl, all right? So Alexander the Greek, okay, and he was known for wearing leopard head coverings, all right? He, after he died, the history is given in the, the book of First Maccabees, his four generals, uh, Lysimaeus, Cassander, Ptolemy, and Seleucid. You can look up the Diadochi. You know, out of the Seleucid came uh, who the scriptures call what? Um, Antiochus. That's his name. You can go and find him in uh, history. Antiochus IV. All right. Epiphanes. All right. But, uh, you know, the, the first Maccabees is where you get that history. You see? Because people try to X out the apocryphal. Well, Daniel gave the outline of all of these beasts. And within the Bible was contained the history of the Israelites as they were in captivity in these different beasts. So where do you get the understanding of what happened with the Israelites all right, as the Bible tracks the chosen seed, you know, from Adam to the Seth, from Seth, <laughs> you know, through Noah, you know, Shem, our facts that all the way up to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the the Bible is tracking them, you know, Egypt, <laughs> all of that. So Daniel prophesied that this seed will be captive in these different beasts, and these different beasts will rule. All right, until the Heavenly Father sent his only begotten son and set up a kingdom. And that's going to happen through the revival of the fourth beast, as we'll show you. 
So the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard. The beginning of that starts here in 1 Maccabees, the first chapter. And that's where you get Hanukkah. All right, Hanukkah, the Feast of Dedication. It comes from this very book, which Yahweh himself was at the Feast of uh, Dedication. So to say the Apocrypha is, is null and void in, in, a, in a book that shouldn't be read and all of this crap, well, you don't know the scriptures anyway. This is what the Greeks did. You know, uh, uh, Alexander, all right, he, 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 he made wars, won strongholds, all right, went through the ends of the earth and took spoils, all right? Now, remember, what was Esau blessed with, okay? He was blessed with the sword, okay? So this is what that energy, the energy of Cain, <laughs> all right, is now, you know, the, they, they're, they're given a rulership, the Edomites, okay? And this is what he did, you know, ruled over different countries, subjected the kings then he died all right and those four generals or those four wings that we read about in daniel the seventh chapter they, they they ruled now right here verse nine it says and after alexander's death they all put crowns upon themselves and so said that their sons after them many years and evils <coughs> evils were multiplied in the earth and there came out of them a wicked root, Antiochus, and this what comes with the uh, the um, Hellenization period. Okay, but what what happened? They put crowns on themselves, all right, and evils were multiplied in the earth. Okay, blasphemies. Okay, so the first. Okay, and the beast, Revelation thirteen and two, and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. That's the Greeks, and his and, and and his feet were as the feet of a bear. Okay, and that represents Russia. Okay, that represents Russia because again we just read in Revelation twenty, Gog and Magog. All right, is going to be at the forefront. All right, of the war that ends them, and of course you know the return of the chariots. Okay, that bear is going to be used as a defense for those other nations in the latter days to form their own beast system. And a lot of those nations that are going to join and be allies with Russia, okay, are within Esau's European Union beast system and NATO. So the Lord is going to use uh, uh, your own sword to destroy you. So the, the, the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard, so their power started with the Greeks, the Edomite, power structure on earth started with the Greeks okay that's why they tell you civilization started with the Greeks okay and his feet were as the feet of a bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion all right and ultimately as you go through history okay Great Britain okay was like the 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 the, the stamp you know of Rome you know, being brought back into the earth, all right? And then what? Out of them came America, okay? And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. The dragon is the ancient Roman Empire, all right? Now, so basically, when you get Daniel the seventh chapter, we'll go to uh, Revelation 20 real quick, I mean, uh, 12 real quick as well when you get Daniel the seventh chapter okay as you can see here Daniel 7 and 6 all right and I beheld another beast which is what the leopard after that comes what the fourth beast this is where Esau established himself in the earth under the Roman Empire he conquered the most land he had the most influence Okay, he did the damn thing under that Roman system. He really stamped himself in the earth. And that's going to be the system that pretty much gives this whole beast its authority as that very system is ruling in the earth today. And we'll get to that. Okay, Daniel 7 and 7. And after this, in the night vision, I beheld a fourth beast dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. 
Okay, so it was greater than the Greeks. The Greeks was the beginning, but the authority and power really came through that Roman Empire. They were dreadful and terrible. They they ruled all right, like 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 harshly and and it had great iron teeth. That's that sword. Okay, that great iron teeth represents their military, which they studied the Assyrians, which had a great army, and they made every they did it even better. And the world had never saw anything like Rome. And it devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue of the feet with it. That's their, their that military like they went and conquered. All right. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had 10 horns. And that's ultimately the, 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 the Senate. That's how it was diverse from all the other beasts, because basically other kingdoms, you know, they had a king and a king would then pass down the throne to his son and so forth. All right. What well, they actually had a Senate to where they voted in their, uh, 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 you know, their rulers, their import emperors. And that's all in the book of uh, Maccabees. It brings up, it, it talks about that Senate. Okay, as a matter of fact, let's see if we can get it. Real quick. Let's see here. Second Maccabees four and forty four. Now, when the king of Tyrus came to King of Tyrus, three men that were sent from the Senate. Yep, I believe. Yep, Senate. So and, and you can see, you know, um, that Senate be be mentioned in the Book of Maccabees, as the Romans were around too. All right, it's the Greco Roman Empire, but Rome <clears throat> just gave it its authority. Started with the Greeks. All right. What we're going to do is let's just look up the term Senate real quick. Ain't got to be too deep. All right. The smaller upper assembly in U.S. Congress, most U.S. states, <laughs> France and other countries. All right. France is a part of the B system. The state council of the ancient Roman Republic and empire. All right which shared legislative power with popular assemblies, administration with the magistrates, judicial power of the knights. Okay. And, and, and these other, you know, uh, these other countries, these vassals, you know, they gave their power to that system. All right. But as you can see, the United States brings that whole energy back into the earth as we're going to get into the, uh, the, the image speaking and living today. Now, when you go to revelation, the 12th chapter, I'm going to just jump to the point. You see the red dragon, Satan. Okay, now this chapter starts out speaking of, you know, a, a, a woman, which we know Israel is likened to a woman with, you know, a crown, you know, 12 stars. Okay, so that's the nation of Israel. All right, and crying and travailing and birth, crying to be delivered. Okay, Jake wanted, you know, that... That, that kingdom back, that kingdom that Solomon, all right, forward in the throne of David, Jake wanted that because they knew in prophecy it was to come, all right? But at that time that Rome was ruling, okay, a lot of them thought that that was it. So they were crying to be delivered. And then it goes into how this red dragon, okay, <laughs> let's see here. I'll, I'll start at three. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and ten crowns upon his head. All right. Now, who at the time of Yahweh Shai, who was ruling in the planet Earth? The Romans. It was the fourth beast. OK. And the Bible is the history of what was happening with those Israelites, in particular, Judah, Benjamin and Levi. All right. Within this fourth beast. OK. So the, 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 the red dragon is tied to having seven heads and ten horns. So as you read Revelation, the 13th chapter, okay, let's go back. As you read Revelation, the 13th chapter, 
okay, this beast, all right, and then it brings up this dragon. The dragon gave him his power, all right, and his seat and great authority, okay? The dragon is tied to that red dragon, okay, that we're reading about here in Revelation, the 12th chapter, okay, because it itself is tied to this, the seven heads and ten horns and, and, and seven crowns, okay, upon his heads, all right? Because Rome, okay, was the, the beginning of what? That dominance. You see? It was through Rome that, the, you know, the, the, even the, the, the Greco system was even to be forwarded. See? This is how these Edomites established themselves, and we're going to break it down. All right? And his tail drew down. The third part of the stars of heaven, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi were what? In subject to Rome. They were vassals. Okay, through the sellout priest. Okay, the, 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 you know, basically Jerusalem became a vassal. But it was captivity. Okay, it was captivity. And Daniel prophesied that we would be in that fourth beast. <laughs> All right, as captives. Now, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast him to the earth. We were in captive to the Roman Empire. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, to devour her child as soon as it was born. Which, what history does that go into? You should know that. Okay, you should be calling it out without me having to show you if you've been watching, all right? But if you don't know, all you have to do is just go into the cross-reference and it should take you to Matthew, the second chapter, okay? Matthew, the second chapter, when Herod, all right, the king, who was he? He was known as the king of the Jews, and he was given that authority, all right, I believe through uh, uh, Augustus, all right, Augustus Caesar, all right? He was given power, all right, because he was an Edomite, all right, but he was a close ally to the Roman Empire. These are the Amalekites. All right. This is Haman and them people. OK. But anyway, when Herod, the king heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And ultimately, what did he do? He was going to try to slay Yahweh Shai. OK, he was going to try to slay Yahweh Shai, man. And you can read that history. All right. And Matthew, the uh, second chapter. Right, because why would he be troubled in his heart? Because he knows and understands that this savior that was going to come and be born represents salvation to the Israelites. So if he's able to cut off that sacrifice that Yahweh Shai was to be grown up and born and, and sacrificed, then he, he ultimately he cuts off our blessing. So the spirit of demon jumps on him because he's Satan. All right. When he heard that Yahweh Shai would be born, he gathered them all and demanded them to take him to where Yahweh Shai was. And they said unto him, he was going to be, the, the prophecy said he was going to be born in Bethlehem. For this was written by the prophet. Okay. And then they quote uh, 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 Micah, the fifth chapter, around the second or third verse. All right. And then Herod told particular men to go to Bethlehem and search diligently for Yahweh Shai. All right? Now, all of this is happening under the authority of the Roman system. All right? Because when you go to Herod, real quick, Herod or Herod the Great, which there's uh, about four Herods, okay? Um, when you uh, go into Paul, his account with Agrippa, Agrippa was a descendant of the Herodian dynasty. OK, the time that, you know, John the Baptist's head got cut off, that Herod wasn't this Herod the Great, but he was a son. OK, the son of this particular Herod that we're reading about. So you have Herod the Great or Herod one was the king of Judea. All right. Who ruled as a client of Rome. <clears throat> he was a client of Rome. You see. <laughs> Just like you got Babylon the Great, and then you got 
the 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 so-called Jew, which they're linked, all right. But and they're all Edomites, okay. All right, but here you go. They're operating. So it says he has gained lasting infamy as the slaughterer of the innocents recounted in the New Testament book of Matthew. Yada yada yada. He had a thirty-three year. His accession to the throne, Herod was a client king or a close ally of Rome, but his route to the throne was not a straightforward one. His father, Antipater, the Idumean, the Edomite, okay, <laughs> made him governor of Galilee in 47, okay, on the death of his father, uh, there followed a turbulent period of infighting, yada, yada, yada. In Rome, Herod gained the favor of Octavian and Mark Anthony, with whose support the Senate was persuaded to install Herod as king of Judea. There you go. All right, so who was Octavian or Augustus? Okay, which that's what the names of uh, the month, they're named after these Roman emperors. We're in August. Okay, this, this goes back to Augustus. Because these, these emperors were worshipped as gods, showing you we're in Rome all over again, was the name of the first and mo by most accounts the greatest Roman emperor. There you go. Okay? There you go. We don't have to go too much into it. Okay? But if you look at um, history, you know, you can clearly see that these are real people. Okay? But anyway... <clears throat> Herod was given power by Rome to be what? King over Judea, the Jews who were in Jerusalem, the circumcision. Okay, they 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 put an Edomite over him, over the, 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 the Jews in Judea. So that's what John the Revelator is seeing here in Revelation, okay, the uh, 12th chapter. Okay, this great red dragon, okay, the Roman Empire, having the, the, the third part of the stars, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, because the uh, other tribes at the time of the Assyrian captivity went to the, the other side of the world, the Americas, okay? So he had us in captivity. So he stood... Before the woman, Israel, which was ready to be delivered, looking for a savior, all right, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Boom. So this great red dragon is speaking of that Roman system, the Roman Empire, the fourth beast, which within that Herod, an Edomite, all right, was given jurisdiction over Jerusalem, over Judea. That's when it was called Judea. All right. And she brought forth the man child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. And that's what they want to do. They want they don't want Yahweh Shah to reign. Okay, so Yahweh Shah was eventually born. He fleed the persecution. His, his parents, his father and his mother, all right, fled to Egypt. And from there they went to Nazareth, all right, uh, and where he was raised. OK, but he was born in Bethlehem, as the prophecy said. So going back here. OK, Revelation three and two and the beast, which I saw was like unto a leopard and his feet were as the feet of a bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. OK, and the dragon gave him his a power and seat and authority. Let's look up this word seat. OK, this is where the Roman Empire OK, is is the power structure. All right. That they're going to uh, uh, gain their authority through. And that is the power structure that rules until this day. Thronos. You already know a throne. OK, and you have to understand it was promised to Esau. It was promised to Esau. Let's see here. Genesis 27. And 39, and Isaac, his father, Esau's father, all right, Jacob and Esau, Jacob got the blessing and the birthright, said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above, 
and by thy sword shall thy live, and thou shalt serve thy brother. He served us under David, Solomon, all right? And he's going to serve us in the kingdom, all right? And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And that happened at the time of kings when he uprooted himself from under Solomon, you know, which was the throne of David, okay? He up uh, 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 pretty much at the time of the Renaissance. All right. Which Jake was ruling, but they weren't ruling in righteousness. But he eventually. All right. Got the dominion. And his dominion is based upon going throughout the four corners of the earth. What? Lying. OK, that's why this word dominion. OK. This word dominion. Rawad, okay, is a wonder, restless, Rome, which that's the spirit of Cain, roaming all throughout the planet Earth with the sword, okay, that's what he does, all right, so at one point Esau would have the throne, the seat, okay, the infl divine uh, to govern the world. All right. And remember, we're seeing a beast arise out of the sea. All right. Which uh, real quick. Second Esdras 11, as it speaks of Rome. All right. How does he address Rome? Second Esdras uh, uh, 11 and 40 in the fourth, fourth beast came and overcame all the beast. As a matter of fact, let's start at thirty nine. It says, and art now thou, not thou it that remainest of the four beasts whom I made to reign in my world, that the end of their times might come through them. OK, so the, the, these are the, the, the beasts whom the Lord made to reign in his world. OK, and the fourth Rome came and overcame all the beasts that were passed and had power over the world with much grateful fearfulness and over the whole compass of the earth and with much wicked oppressing all right ruling by the sword by deception and so le long time dwelt he on an earth with deceit blasphemy see for the earth has thou not judged with truth so the edomites will get their world rulership through this very system here rome the dragon gave him his power in his seat and great authority I hope y'all understand that. So it was Rome, that Roman Empire that gave him his power and seat and great authority. All right. Now, as he's looking and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wondered after the beast. All right. And I saw <laughs> one of his heads as it was wounded and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wondered after the beast. All right. And one of his heads that were wounded was Rome because we know that that Western Roman Empire fell. The fall of Rome. OK. And the deadly wound was healed via a renaissance. OK. Let's get the book of Malachi. Chapter one. All right. So he saw. The Roman Empire fall, but the deadly wound was healed. Okay. Malachi 1 and 4. Whereas Edom have said, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus said the Lord of hosts, they shall build as they have built. All right. Babylon, the, the NATO, the EU is a part of that building. Okay. And they shall build. But I shall throw down and they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord have had indignation forever. And we're going to know that as the Lord comes back and destroys this place. But let's look up this word return. OK, because Edom said we are impoverished. Which the Western Roman Empire, which in history, there were many times where E was down and, and kind of fought back. 
All right, but the 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 main point is as that deadly wound, okay, they were impoverished. They were looked at as cavemen. Okay? They were through. <laughs> All right? They 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 were uh the uh, the base they were looked at as the base nation that they really are. Okay? As a matter of fact, the word impoverished rashash or they were beat down or they lost okay but it says that what we will return and that word return is shawab to return to turn back to return okay and what will be returned rome all right to restore see that to restore refresh repair now, let's look up the word renaissance. <clears throat> let's look up the word renaissance. A rebirth or revival, okay? A rebirth or revival. Okay, so when we go to the Renaissance, let's see here. Let's see, let's go here, see what this one says. The rebirth of Rome. That's what the Renaissance was all about. That's why you had the classics. All right, there, there, there's science, there, there was a medical Renaissance. All right, where basically the image of Esau was rebirthed into the earth. Okay? Renaissance, all right, rebirth period in European civilization immediately following the Middle Ages, all right, and conventionally held to have been characterized by a surge of interest in classical scholarship. And we're going to see what classical scholarship is predicated upon, okay, and values, okay. The Renaissance also witnessed the discovery and exploration of new continents, the substitution of Copernican for a Ptolemaic system of astronomy. So that Greco-Roman spirit, all right, came back into the earth. But remember, the, the 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 dragon Rome is where they got the majority of that's where they got the real authority so that's what was really being birthed into the earth okay um there you go the decline of a feudal system and the 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 growth of commerce the system we see today okay the rise of humanism which ultimately is uh <laughs> satanism which basically says that you know, man himself, we don't need a God, man himself using, you know, uh, uh, the right values and this and this and that can solve his own problems. Okay, the, the problems and solutions come from humans, not a higher power, basically, in a nutshell. All right, and, and, and Esau pushes all of that. Okay, that, that, I mean, we, we, the blasphemies, basically. Okay. Now, classical, <laughs> boom, this is locked. But classical scholarship, just to get to the point, the study in all aspects of ancient Greece and Rome. There you go. So basically all of the classic, you know, science and wisdom and understandings that stem back to the ancient Roman Empire the ancient Greco-Roman Empire, because remember the beast started with the Greeks, okay, is 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 basically the Renaissance rebirthed it back in. Whether it be art, you know, whether it be philosophy, whether it be poetry, whether it be you know, romance, okay, they pretty much established their image in the earth, you know, up until this day, all right? Well, they're taking it a step further. The idols of ancient Rome, all right? So everything that the deadly wound Western Roman Empire stood for, 
All right, it was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. All of the people on the earth follow this mindset, this, this, the image of the beast. They follow after it. They worship it. See? So as, you know, from the Renaissance, it started in, in Italy, okay? But then, you know, eventually as Esau ruled and fought and did his wickedness and did his thing, you had the Spanish, um, you know, you, you had the French, and you have the British, all right? Pretty much they, all right, forwarded all of the, those mindsets as well and took it even further. It's Rome. So the world is wondering after the beast through this political system, through this way of life that's been set up, which it all stems back to the ancient Roman Empire. And, of course, if you've watched my videos for years, I'm going to bring that video, that same video that I bring every year when we got to go through this. America is Rome all over again. How does the image and the beast speak? All right. How does the image of the beast speak and live today? Well, it's through the policies, the holidays, the way of life you see being put before you. Okay. So verse four. And they worship, so all of the world is wondering after these philosophies, this way of life, romance, what a, a man is, what a woman is, you know, just everybody. The religions, whatever, the wine, they're drunk. And they worship the dragon, which gave power to the beast. So people kind of get that messed up because, of course, it's a beast system. It's Esau Edom system. But remember, the dra you see, the dragon gave this beast its power, okay? And the beast system, all right, at this time, all right, NATO and the EU, which America, the whore rides that beast, you see? But that all brought back the, the ancient Roman Empire. So they worship the dragon. You, basically, you're worshiping ancient Rome. You're bound to that authority. OK. The, the, that's what runs this current world. OK. And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast and they worship the beast. All right. They worship Esau, Edom. All right. And what they've established in the earth. Who is like unto the beast? Who can make war with him? Who could who could fight this devil? Who could fight Esau? <coughs> We've been seeing a rise in videos. If Edomites boasting and you don't want to go to war with America, you can't go to war with America. We have the most powerful this and that. That's the mindset. That was the mindset of ancient Rome. That, that was the mindset of the Greeks before them. That's the mindset of America in this system they have today, NATO. NATO was uh, uh, created to oppose the USSR, right? <laughs> so in, 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 in since and when NATO established itself, the USSR pretty much uh, just melted, you know? It melted. They disbanded. You see, but we're living in a time where that 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 bear is being awoke, and many nations are joining themselves into it. So NATO thinks that as it's dealing with you know uh, Russia, they're still dealing with that docile. Nah, things are changing, but the pride of your heart is deceiving you. So this is the mindset people would have, all right, of this beast system, which the dragon gives this system its power and authority because that's what's really being reestablished in the planet Earth. As a matter of fact, I have this quick video I always play, and what we're going to do is look up a few of these uh, uh, companies or, or, or organizations. And this may be a two-part video. I'm going to have to uh, do two parts because there's a lot that must be understood in order for you to um, get this chapter. Because you, you see a lot of men going back and forth with Great Millstone about the mark of the beast. All right. But they never go into the buying and selling aspect. All right. They, they just talk about, you know, it's a philosophy of this. But then you got to understand, as I'll do a video after I finish this series, uh, you know, there's a difference between worshiping the beast, all right, and taking his mark. It, it, it separates those two. 
So a philosophy will fall under, okay, the, uh, the image of the beast. But we'll get to that. Let's check this out. But the truth is, Knights of Columbus. Knights of Columbus. Now what we're going to do is play this and then we'll start it over. But the truth is, Knights of Columbus, Opus Dei, Knights of Malta, Club of Rome, Council of 300, Council of Trent, Council on Foreign Relations, the list goes on. All of these are suborders of the Jesuit Order, of the Holy Roman Empire, the rulers of today's Western world, the owners of the United Nations. America is their new world, Rome owns the world. Rome established the new world in which we live today. The new world order has already been in place since... Rome established this world that we live in today. Mid 40s. The end of the is not coming. It's been here for a long time. And it's Esau trying to establish all right, his power, all right, which the, the, the bulk of his power came through Rome, all right, worldwide. He's trying to establish it, all right, all, all right, over the world, all right, with the blessings he's been given. And to set himself up as most high God on earth, X out the chosen people, which he's been trying to do that. All right. Via his carnal blessings. Now let's go here. But the truth is, Knights of Columbus. All right, so let's look up the Knights of Columbus real quick. So the Knights of Columbus was a creation of Father. All right, so a Catholic priest, <laughs> all right, Michael McGivney, an Irish-American Catholic priest in New Haven, Connecticut, who saw a need for a men's fraternal order of the Catholics. So this is a secret order of the Roman Catholic Church, all right? Again, Roman Catholic, Rome, okay, which ultimately is the seat of the false prophet. The Vatican, which when you go into the Vatican, okay, it, it's it's in the uh, form of a serpent. <laughs> all right, you can't make this up. Check this out. It's all kind of Roman ideology. But when you go into the the the, the clearly, look at that. You, you mean to tell me that's not a, a serpent? All right, which Vatican means uh, uh, the city of the divining serpent. Okay, so the, 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 the serpent and the great red dragon, all of that is tied, Esau. Okay, but ultimately, when you look into this secret fraternal order of the Catholic Church, what do you think is going on there? Okay. And it was a, they was founded in 1888, early, you know, uh, America, as it was being, you know, formed. Okay, putting themselves in, in positions. And what is this order known for when you look it up? Uh, uh, you know, uh, to look after widows and orphans and, you know, children. What, what do you think they're, uh, <laughs> they're, they're doing? OK, and these are the people in positions of power. But again, it's the energy of Rome being brought back or you can look it up into more of it. But we're just going to move on to the next one. OK. Opus Dei, Knights of Malta. Knights of Malta. I didn't hear the other one he said. OK, let's, re let's see if we can get it, pick it up. Columbus, Opus Dei, Knights of Malta. Knights of Malta, <laughs> a modern resurrection. See what that's all about. All right. Let's see here. <laughs> so it's dealing with Wow, they established a hospital and let's see. Knights of Malta 
Sovereign Military Order of Malta. Yeah, let's see what we can get here. The Knights of Malta, they're a secretive religious order with a long and bloody history and unique status under international law. They're given power, all right, but that doesn't mean they run the world, but they're a part of what runs this world. And pretty much, I mean, they're bringing back Rome. Rome's authority. Okay? And they have power over uh, military functions. Okay? And you'll just have to look that up. You know, if any brother or sister knows more about these. But what we do know is that they're, they're bringing back the energy of Rome. Okay? All right, so let's check this video out here. Stuff they don't want you to know, the Knights of Malta. See if we can get some. Because basically we're making Esau bear. And this is all being done, you know, I'm breaking down Revelation 13. But at the same time, the Spirit is uh, uh, having me to go into these particular uh, functions, all right, these power structures that run this world in secret and how it all ties to Rome. Here are the facts. Originally known as the Knights Hospitaller, the Sovereign Military Order of Malta dates back to about 1048 AD, when European knights on the crusade became affiliated with a hospital located in Nuristan, Jerusalem. This a hospital in Jerusalem. We'll have to look up the history on that one day, but all right, there you go. It's Esau <laughs> getting this power, all right, uh... You know, and going into the Holy Land and that region and setting up a hub of what? Wicked, anti-Messiah, demonic, all right, behavior. That vibration of Satan will be pushed out on the earth, all right? And the Catholic Church is a big part of that, okay? That deals with all of those idols because where did the Roman Empire and the Greeks get their idols? Ancient Babylon, Sumeria, okay, Egypt, Can Canaan. OK. And they're here to set up that very system on the earth. And that's why they have to have control of, uh, you know, Jerusalem. But can't you see that the pope is involved in a lot of this NWO talk? OK. Is one of the oldest Catholic religious orders, and it is also the oldest surviving order of chivalry in the world. Today, this order focuses on humanitarian aid rather than military campaigns. It has diplomatic relations with 104 countries, but operates in 120. To the mainstream world, the sovereign military order of Malta is a force for good, providing invaluable medical assistance to the impoverished and to regions racked by natural disasters. However, to conspiracy theories, the Knights of Malta are more than a global group of humanitarians. They're an independent army bent on world domination. Here's where it gets crazy. Part of that is true, to an extent. The order is considered an independent subject of international law, meaning it is a quasi-independent sovereign entity, with some of the international rights given to actual countries. Yet the order itself is not a state. It holds no territory, and its members are citizens of countries across the globe. Being a Catholic organization, the order still holds allegiance to the Vatican and the Pope, and their unusual legal status does not in itself indicate a conspiracy. However, this order has been the subject of numerous conspiracy theories over the course of its nearly 1,000-year-old history. Members of the order have been accused of everything from corporate misbehavior to enabling the rise of Hitler. Additionally, members of the order have been accused of helping Nazis and SS troops escape after the fall of Germany and the conclusion of World War II through the use of networks similar to the famous Underground Railroad. These escape networks were conventionally called Vatican Rat Lines. The conspiracies have not stopped in the modern age, and concerns about the order are not relegated to people on the fringes of society. Consider Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist Seymour Hersh, who exposed the My Lai Massacre and the White House's infamous assassination squad. On January 17, 2011, Hersh mentioned the Knights of Malta in a speech to the Georgetown University campus in Doha, Qatar. 
first alleged that a large percentage of the Special Operations Command and the Joint Special Operations Command in the United States are either members of or supporters of the Knights of Malta. Hirsch went on to state that Order members and supporters saw their mission against Islamic fundamentalism as a crusade. Hirsch was roundly criticized for these statements. Yet Hirsch's claims have also garnered some support outside of the realm of conspiracies, based mainly on the fact that members of the Order have also been influential members of government or intelligence agencies. So what is the Sovereign Military Order of Malta? Today, it's somewhere between a state and a humanitarian NGO. But to conspiracy theorists, it's a powerful organization on a mission. What is that mission exactly? Humanitarian aid or something they don't want you to know? Well, we know the mission, all right, is to, you know, set up their NWO. Let's keep going. Club of Rome. The Club of Rome, all right? And we always go into the Club of Rome, okay? <laughs> Let's type it in here. What is the Club of Rome? And pretty much this whole, you know, carbon emission, you know, green agenda that 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 stems from this particular uh, and, and we can clearly see that's at the forefront of policies to what control the new world. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about population theories. I'll be looking at Thomas Malthus, Esther Bosrup and Club of Rome. This is for the IGCSE geography spec where you need to know the uh, theories that talk about population and resources and the relationship between them for the economic activity specification. So I'm going to start with Thomas Malthus. Uh, he was writing his theory back in the 18th century and he was essentially a pessimist. Um, he's, the equivalent of um, Malthus is like Thanos from uh, the Marvel movies. He um, essentially had this theory that said that population would grow exponentially and it would grow faster, therefore, than the food supply, which, um, as you can see on here, is rising at a very linear rate. So essentially, because population is growing faster than the food supply, it would eventually overtake it. And as soon as we get population higher than food supply, then we are getting issues that relate to that because we get conflict. So when the population outstrips the supply and we lead to war, it can lead to famine, it can lead to disease. These are the only things that would be able to take the population back down to below the food supply for things to go back in balance. So, so do we not see all of that being talked about right now? Okay, now I don't want to take too long on this, but you know, he said the, the amount of human, be, there being too many humans leads to famine, famine leads to the pestilence, pestilence leads to this and then war. All right, but I'm going to jump to the part about the Club of Rome. Let's start at criticisms. See, there's criticisms of uh, Bosworth as well. So one of the most obvious ones is that some of the innovations that we've actually used to increase our food supply aren't always beneficial in the long term, and so they're not very sustainable. Here's an example of the Amazon rainforest, which has been deforested for cattle farming. Um, we know that if we continue to do that to, to meet our food supply, then we will have severe long-term issues on both a regional and global scale because the Amazon rainforest is so important for the running of our global ecosystem. So this is an example where innovation does improve the food supply, but maybe there are issues surrounding it and they are not always long term solutions. This man is the devil. The last group I'm going to look at I've called the Club of Rome. They were a group of scientists and politicians that were about in the 1970s. Their main point was they argued that at the current growth rates of the world population, and also the kind of way we were consuming resources and producing industrial activity, uh, they, all of those were incredibly unsustainable. So they said that at those current rates in the 1970s, the earth would reach the limits of its, be, uh, of its growth by 2070. After that, what would happen, because these are unsustainable kind of growth patterns, 
we would see the collapse of society. So population would go down, food um, supply would go down, industrial activity would go down. Um, an example of this is people have looked at um, how much resources we have left. So the idea that on here oil could be completely run out by 2050. Uh, and this is the same, this is all of the stuff that they're talking about in Davos, Davos Switzerland, Europe which is the highest point of Europe, Davos, son of David. All right, clearly, we can see how this very, the, 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 these very theories and everything that's running today's world and influencing, it, it, it goes back to Rome in some shape, form, or fashion. Treaty of Rome, is it, why is it all of this Rome? And we're going to get, all right, into the infrastructure, the holy days that they have on the left-hand side and everything else that goes back to Rome. All right? So, I mean, we can look at a few more. Council of 300. The Council of 300 or Committee of 300. Let's see if we can um, look that up here. Committee of 300. Or committee. Let's type in committee. What is that? It's all dealing with NWO when you look it up. Secret families that rule the world. Let me just look it up here. Let's see here. <clears throat> Committee of 300. <laughs> No, is also known as the Olympians, is a conspiracy theory that claims a powerful group was funded by the British atrocity, which the British damn sure was the reestablishing of Rome. All right, but it's a lot of, you know, as you can see, conspiracies always surround these people. You see? Conspiracies always surround these people. <laughs> All right, but Esau is ultimately trying to reestablish Rome, uh, uh, all the way. The Council of Trent. All right. And you get the gist, you know. And you can look some of these up on your own, you know, whatever you find, you, 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 you add it to the conversation. All right, we can't do all of the research, shit. <laughs> all right, Council of Trent. The Catholic Church, tied to the Roman Catholic Church. <sighs> Counter-Reformation. Yeah, I mean, you can look all of that stuff up. Council on Foreign Relations. Council on Foreign Relations. We always hear them. All right, it's all wrong. The list goes on. And the list goes on because, as he's saying, All of these are suborders of the Jesuit order, of the Holy Roman Empire, the rulers of today's Western world, the owners of the United Nations. America is their new world. Rome owns the world. Rome established the new world in which we live today. Right, Rome established the new world in which we live today. All right, going back to Revelation, the 13th chapter. Okay. Let's go back. Okay, Revelation 13. All right. And three. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And the deadly wound was healed. Okay. 
And there you go. The Deadly Wound being healed was Esau coming out of that, uh, you know, dark time. You know, that time he was down, a thousand-year period, renaissance, rebirth. We showed you how that was tied to Rome in just one way. We could have showed you way more. All right, but 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 through that, all the world is now wondering after the beast, how to love or romance. What that, that goes back to Rome, fast food, Rome, a, a great military, Rome, Valentine's Day, Rome, Christmas, Rome, but it all was under different names. So, and they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast. They worshipped Esau, all right, through this Roman system. He said, I'm saying, like, bro, you know there can never be a greater military. There can never be a greater burger. There can never be a greater society than this set up by the white man. Saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And that's the mindset that follows them unto this day. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. So as he's established this power, he now controls, you know, how economies run. He controls education. He controls information. He controls the flow of, of wealth. He controls, you know, uh, all of these various, um, uh, he controls everything. It's through his policy, and if you, his name is not outright on it, he secretly controls it. Okay? And he set up a hub of Babylon. Okay, Babylon, like this is a big uh, satanic Babylonian church. Children are being offered up. All manner of evil is just taking place in the earth. All right. So there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and he will be able to just continue without no real true opposition to what he was saying. All right. Until what? And power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. That's that 350 years. 42 months, okay, three and a half years, 350 years, that time period, okay, from 1619, all right, to around uh, uh, the 1960s, where the spirit of life from on high would enter into the uh, Israelites, and that marked his downfall, okay? Once we got the understanding, pretty much now he's on a decline, and he, he only has but a short time to establish this this new Rome, this new world system he's trying to set up through what? Because now he has technology. All right. <laughs> now those ten horns have pretty much been uh, 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 added to to where it's <coughs> about twenty eight different nations and sub nations, man, working together. All right, to give power to what they're trying to uh, accomplish, but within it now they have different interest they don't agree which is good all right so he was able to just lie he was able to, to use his pseudosciences everything he wanted he was able to do and forward any manner of of, of abomination and <coughs> evil okay and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against the most high okay through the system being set up to blaspheme his name, his reputation, what he stands for, the legacy he's tied to, he saw blaspheme that. Remember, he, he's here to oppose the Most High, to oppose Yahweh Shai, to oppose the true chosen people and establish his own versions and even say, I am he. I am and there's none else besides me. He's not, uh, he hasn't set up a, a, a godly system in the earth. So he blasphemed his name and his tabernacle, which the tabernacle of the Most High is truly with men. But he's blasphemed Jer Jer Jerusalem. He's blasphemed the elect. Using what? Pseudoscience, lines, lies and uh, signs. <coughs> signs and lying wonders, Salakia. So he blasphemed the Most High, his name, his reputation, his, his authority. His tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. He blasphemed the angels, man. He got people thinking that angels are tied to big green eyed men just walking around with hands and feet. Grays is what they call them. But aliens or whatever. They ain't got all too much going on. Okay? 
and it was given unto him, okay, this particular system, all right, after the deadly wound was healed, it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And you can look up colonialism, you know, the colonial periods, colonization. You know, as he went all over the planet Earth and waged war on the nations and conquered them with the sword. But you have to understand that was given unto him. He was given that power, which that links to the blessing given unto Esau. He was given power to conquer the Israelites, to overcome us. All right. He now has the dominion and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. All right. This is that beast. OK. Uh, 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 in many waters. OK. Out rising out of the sea. All right. Uh, calming the wave, telling everybody to shut up. You're going to listen to me. And he did it in the name of Christianity. All right. A lot of these things. But these are the children of Satan. So with him, with him doing this, he was able to forward his image in the earth, his philosophy, his tongue. As the scriptures say, his tongue walk it through the earth. OK, his philosophy, that wine. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life. All right. Of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All right. And you're seeing that right now. Until this day, you have those who <coughs> even of our people worship. OK, the uh, the the image of the beast, they worship Esau. They really believe that he is the man. They really have conformed. All right, to him as the creator and the end all be all of what is. But now he's starting to be questioned and called out. Okay, because those who are written in the book of life have have a testimony against him and of life. So the people who, who whose names are not written in the book of life are gonna worship the beast in his image, okay? And those who are written in the book of life, they're not gonna bow to the image of Baal. OK. If any man have an ear, let him hear. All right. Now, John, immediately after he describes all of this, he says this. OK. And you have to understand why he's saying this. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. And he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Hear is the patience and the faith of the saints. Now, why did he say that? Okay, because ultimately this, this devil was going to pay. Don't get it twisted. All right, but how he's going to pay is through, okay, there's the, the next verse, through the, the revival of Rome, all right, which is Babylon the Great. That's how he's going to pay, and eventually they go into the captivity that they de deserve through that fall which we're going to tie that to Daniel, the seventh chapter. So, you know, John just ironically lets us know, look, this nigga is going into captivity. Out of nowhere, he just puts that in the middle of all of what was written. The Lord had us to remember, look, the, the, the prophecies are going to be fulfilled still, but this is just his time to rule. And he's going to be ended as we know Esau is the end of the world.